boom, we're on. And the day's guest to us. <laughs> Who is that? Oh. Stevie, Stevie Brown. <laughs> and the day's guest, we've got the legendary Gary Falls. Should I be saying that name? I know, but Stevie Brown, my name is <laughs> a new identity. So you've been saying to me how... Why have you got this identity? You know why I've got this on. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Ferris blocked me. <laughs> Shite myself. <laughs> Change the dress. I've got my veins. <laughs> my veins have all got no haircuts. <laughs> it's like saying fucking candy, man, isn't it? It's not that. I've got Paul on the podcast next month as well. <laughs> I know, I've seen that. That's when I realised I was fucking blocked. <laughs> Can shite myself. Why is it blocked me? I'll be wearing that stuff. <laughs> Every time a raindrop drives by, I'm like, that. <laughs> Why did they pack a windy seat? <laughs> <laughs> Good times, isn't it? Uh, so, listen, mate, it's an absolute pleasure to have you back on. You're my first guest to have on twice on the show. So, mate, the first time... I need to take this off my heat service, Keep man. it on, mate. Keep it on. <laughs> the first time we had you on, went February, March, six months ago. That's right, Your aye. career was just kicking off. Same as mine. I think you had 5,000 followers on Facebook. Now you're nearly hitting 100. You're selling out gigs. You're selling out 900,000 tickets in over a minute under two minutes, and you've done a, a thousand seat and a thousand seat on the SECC back to back. First of all, mate, I just want to congratulate you because you're nothing but an amazing guy. Thanks a lot, bro. Yeah, he's a plonker, but, but for what you're achieving and everything, mate, I take my hat off to you because anybody deserves it, it's you. So, how's the experience been, mate? Mate, honestly, I feel like I'm in a dream because obviously it's my full-time job now. So I just cut about the tune holiday, <laughs> eating fucking sushi and drinking water with cucumber in it. <laughs> I feel like I've won something. Like Look down your it. nose, everybody knows this is scum, scum of the air. It's like the West End <laughs> reading my books. Don't speak to I'm me. literature. <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been amazing, mate. And like, as you know, when we've done this podcast, you, uh, off, the, off the record, obviously you know that my anxiety was terrible yeah. at the time. My mental health wasn't the best. And to come for that, to, to where I am now, I'm still anxious, you know what I mean? But... To have the numbers and then the, the feeders is fucking phenomenal. Because it was overnight. Uh -huh. It wasn't a gradual build up. Just done a no. couple of live videos, went mad and then. But you say that, but the grind for the last two or three years of doing your videos, mm -hmm. you never gave up. And that's for anybody listening or watching. It's about keep going. No, no matter what hurdle you, no matter about the depression, whether you're in your bed, everybody lies under the covers greeting at one point in their fucking life. But it's either staying there or doing something about it to go on. So you've constantly, you've always put your videos out, no matter if it had 10 views. 100,000 views, well, you've it, constantly yeah. done it, you've constantly chipped away, and the results are speaking for themselves. It's just been consistent in it. That's what it is, And a lot of people would say to me as well, like, oh, enjoy your videos, as you'll see on, on the comments, your videos made my day better and stuff, and that was the idea behind it. It wasn't it to sell it there, CC, mm -hmm. and it was just to get, give people a wee laugh for nothing, you know what I mean? Because if you want to come and see me, you need to pay 15, 16 quid a ticket, but just get, some people can't go to gigs because they've got anxiety or just because they can't afford it. So my wee live videos and my Instagram videos, just a wee freebie to just say, can cheer up, man, innit? It's brilliant, mate, how far you've came in the, the six months. It's unbelievable, because we started this journey last year. If anybody that's not watched the second episode, you'll get your balls kicked, but me and Gary <laughs> met in Inverness. When I was trying to do the comedy, but I'd fell away from it. Your first gig? Uh, it wasn't my... It wasn't for me. Remember I first oh, seen you and I was like, who the fuck's this poser? <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy with his brilliant white teeth and his good looks at a comedy club. You're all fat and depressed, who's this? And you were just sitting buzzing and positive, you know what I mean? But you turned out one of my best pals. Aye, and it's been, for the last 18 months, man, our journey's been unbelievable. For what we've achieved, for two scheme boys coming from a background of crime, whether it's drink, drugs, gambling, shagging, whatever we've done, we can show people that you can change. And I put a post on there, I don't know if you've seen it on social media, but Glasgow Live, about, I'd done a homeless documentary um, in Glasgow Live. We'd contacted them for January. I was going to go through the wee guy, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to tell you the facts. So we'd contacted Glasgow Live in January um, to say we've got a charity screening in January. If you'd like to come along, we've had a few screenings allowing you to raise money towards homelessness and to create help for the charities who are in the documentary, saving lives every day, because if the homeless people never had these people. The would be bodies lying at every corner. So I was expecting, look, they're Glasgow Live. The documentary was based in Glasgow. Never heard from them. But yesterday, somebody outed them on Twitter. <clears throat> and says, why has Glasgow Live not done a story? I says, we've contacted them numerous occasions, but we've not heard of them. But the wee guy obviously emailed and says, look, I've got my reasons. Can I phone you? I says, look, I want to hear this. Here's my number. He phoned us. And his reasons why Glasgow Live never had done a story about the homeless documentary was because... <clears throat> I've got a past, I've been in the jail, I've done fucked up shit of course, 
uh, because I was seeing Kerry Katona was one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's valid, that point of Because it shagged up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and because I've had gangsters and porn stars, stars on my show. One of my favourites, mate. <laughs> that's, the, that's the first time I've ever watched a porn star with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he she says. She was brilliant when she The banner was great. Aye, so for them to uh, use that as excuses for me, it kind of pissed his off. It kind of got my back up because I didn't... Uh, it doesn't matter people's past. For, if you're homeless, you don't care what somebody's past is. Homeless people have got convictions, or they are on the street, everybody's got past, or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? So it kind of pissed us off, and that's where I kind of went off in one. So literally, I don't need your help. I don't need the value. I don't need anybody. Whether it's, we've had support for Daily Record, The Sun, The Evening Times. It wasn't about that. It was about the way he came across and gave me all these reasons why he didn't support homelessness, as if he was better than that, as if, he doesn't fucking care, but it doesn't matter. It's not about me. It was about to create the awareness to help the people that are on the street. And my documentary is to create awareness for any people to see it, to help, and for people to go, wait a minute, and change their perspective, the way they see people like sleeping on the streets, because it can happen to anybody. And that's why I got my back up, and I was fucking raging. I want to take it personally, I think, because like, obviously Glasgow Live is, you know what it's like, mate, and, and the internet, you, you put something on, and there's always people who will find a problem. You know what I mean? And I think everybody's playing it safe. Like, even with me, when I put jokes on, people get offended that jokes are on the offensive. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, fucking hell, you need to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know no, I, mean? no, I was going to bite I'm the bullet, but the fact that I started losing my nut and the fact but that. But you've got, you've got loads of attention for it anyway. I know, but that's not the point. You kind of want your city to back you. You kind of want people to, to back it. And the fact that he's not watched it, pissed me off even more as well. Don't sit and come at me and judge me. You don't know me. You might have read shit in the papers, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But don't judge a book by its cover. People can change, and we're living proof of that. So. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, so, so you Paul Ferris you're a, you're a great example of a man like you've reformed your life and I'm proud of you and, oh, I'm, I'm honest I've got your five books I'll get them I've got a post on my wall I'll get them signed for you next month <laughs> so the journey mate I want to know about it talk to me about it the last six months because everybody's speaking your name in Scotland you're, when I spoke to you six months ago you were one of the rising stars but no you're one of the biggest in Scotland in the comedy circuit. Everybody's speaking to you, speaking about you. Mm -hmm. Want to buy your tickets and to sell out the SECC in just over a minute. It's phenomenal. See, he, see when they gave us, when my agent, David at DH Promotions, when he said to us, he's like, oh, because I've done the stand, obviously, the Rotunda this year and a couple of the Glasgow gigs. And he's like, why don't we try and do the SEC? And I'm like, mate, we'll never follow the SEC. But obviously this boy walks with Catherine Ryan, Milton Jones, James Acaster. He knows we'd be looking at traffic and how things are going. He's like, let's add the SEC and we'll see what happens. So obviously spoke is and I was like, right, we'll try it. As you do, you'd be the same. It's like when you buy a fucking, when you get married or something, you get nerves and you're rattled. So on the day, the tickets went to sale at 10 o'clock. I plugged it a few days before it. And on the day, at 10 o'clock, eh, I was like, Tash, right, I'm going to turn my phone off. Because what I do is I sit and watch like a hawk mm -hmm. to see you. So if I looked at fucking 11 o'clock, there was two tickets sold. I'd be an anxious wreck for yeah, about three classes. weeks, right? And uh, so at 10 o'clock, I was like, Tashley, I'm going to turn my phone off. Made a bit of breakfast, but I didn't turn my phone off at this point. And I'm making breakfast, and I'm like, fuck, it was about four minutes past, and I ran back to my phone to turn it off. So need because people start phoning you, can I get free tickets? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Family and pals you haven't seen for years, you know, I get free tickets. <laughs> and they give a fuck about you know what I mean? <laughs> now they want a free ticket. So I goes back to my phone uh, after making breakfast to turn it off, and it was four minutes past, and I had five missed calls for David and two for SEC. So I'm like, fuck, I phoned David back and I phoned the back and I was like, all right, mate, I says, what's, what's the score here? He said, guy, that gig sold it. And I was like, mate, shut the fuck up. <laughs> he says, it sold it 70 seconds. Do you want to add a second show? And that's what happened. It sold it the first show. I did the second show. Second show took a bit longer. I think it was like four and a half years to sell it. Nah, and that, sure. And the second show, I was an absolute wreck, you know what I mean? Because I was years? actually watching it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was in the hospital my way and I'm like, trying to watch it and obviously if we can sit with him. Dude. That's 2,000 people in five years, mate. Mm -hmm. That is unbelievable. A boy for Springburn. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? How's anxiety been? It's just the same, mate. I felt this worse. Just the same, it's no shame. That's what I'm saying. See when you've got goals, I felt this worse, you know what I mean? See when you've got goals, <clears throat> see when you hit your goals. Nothing changes. It's just the feel good factor to go, I've achieved something. Mm -hmm. But then that disappears after a day or two, after your gig. You're, you've got all that attention, you've got all that people want to appreciate you. Before a gig, I'm an anxious wreck. Mm -hmm. Right up to I get that mic, mate, I'm panic attacks, I like to run away. But see, after it, two days of absolute adrenaline. So it's like my worst days to my best days, mate. Four days before the afters, mental, mate. It's like a roller coaster. That's nuts, isn't it? But right. that's what I'm saying. When you've got visions, when you've got goals, 
See, see, your life's hard. So if you don't do fuck all, your life becomes hard. But if you're striving to better yourself and striving towards something for the hard things, then once you get the hard things, your life becomes kind of easier as well. But it's try to get... I keep fucking saying it, but when you hit that progression, when you hit Momentum that bar, that, aye, mm-hmm. it's to go again and raise it. Because when you achieve something, right, what do I do next? How do I go again? I know, I know I'm a fat guy, right? But this is, this is my kind of... The way I analyse it, right? It's like, for the five years I've been doing comedy before this, I've been preparing to do the race, right? Now I'm on the track, I'm ahead at the first 100 metres, and I've just got to keep, it's like, people keep saying, oh, you're the next Bridges or the next Boyle, no, because I set my own standards, mm-hmm. that they're amazing comedians, but I don't want to be anything like them, I want to do my own thing, you know what I mean? So it's just keeping that momentum, or going around the track ahead of everybody. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as you think you've made it, you've only took two steps back, mm-hmm. it's about, right, what do I do next? How do I, how do I go again? How do I get more people? Because mm-hmm. it's no fucking easy, mate, to get up every day and have the dedication to keep throwing out videos to keep, Setting goals to keep setting, like I say, they four and a half hours of anxiety, you're not. But it's the end product to feel as if you're, you're doing something in your life, you're achieving something, which is 97, 98% of the world. I'm not I'm no value in their worth because they're sitting, they're just accepting. Do you know what I mean? When we sat in this show six months ago, I was getting 50 views. Four, I think I had 17 subscribers when you came on. Now I've got 4,000. Now I'm hitting between 10,000 and 20,000 an episode. Do you know what I mean? It's all about progression, raising that bar and believing that you can do something in your life, believing that you can change. I'm 34, do you know what I mean? It's, it's never too late for anybody. Yeah, it's not even people in their 60s, their 70s. If you've got goals, man, get up early. And I'll speak to Gordon, he, uh, Gary, Gary Varen, what's his name? Gary Varenchuk? But Gary Varen, Varenchuk? Gary V. <laughs> uh, you listen to these podcasts and guys, they just motivate you. Whatever you're putting in your mind, it's going to rewire it. See, when I, when I started my comedy journey, like you're talking about, I'm lucky because like Glasgow Live will give me articles at the mm-hmm. times and it. Because I'm just kind of a comedian, you know what I mean? I'm known, and, and I'm lucky I've got them. But I remember my first three years in comedy, I always felt like I had to get a paper to, to write a story for me to, to move forward. And then, and then one day I just went, do you know what? I will just need to do it myself. Because a lot of comedians are in the, in the premises that they're waiting for an agent to come. Mm-hmm. Now I was selling out guys before my agent arrived. He's, he's, a, he's a booker, he's not an agent. What he does now is he books my bigger gigs because he's got a cash flow. Mm-hmm. The rest he a couple of thousand to, to hire that. And I've not got that kind of money, but... I remember saying after two or three years, fuck it, I just need to get my head down. I need to make sure the number, that in my comedy, as I've said before, my number one priority is my audience. I need to give them a good show. Number two, I need to get my good venue where the, where the drinks are decent. Sometimes like the SEC, I have to go there because of the numbers now. But that's but why... People take their aim, you have bottles in there anyway. <laughs> I'll take my aim, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody takes their eyes on the FCC. No, but I'll have a man in the cupboards. <laughs> Everybody takes but their aim, hopes. I'm still, I'm still keeping... The, the wee gigs that I like, because I, I done Killy the Palace Theatre, and that was that was my first big sellout gig. That was so five fifty, six hundred, mm-hmm. and City came out. City be doing a pub the, the, the week before that. I was doing a hundred seat a pub, so I came for that gig where somebody at the back heckles me. I just get torn and I'm not. Like, oh, mm-hmm. you're going down, fucking Beetlejuice, because you know I mean? <laughs> of a black white jumper, them, to terrorise them, and then you came out at, like the Palace Theatre. Like I could hear them all buzzing. I could hear like the chant my name and stuff. And see when I came out and just seen. About five, six hundred people, just two levels of people with it packed. Mm-hmm. It was just fucking. I ran off the stage, man. I was going to shite myself. <laughs> <laughs> I ran off my pals. I get back on. <laughs> no, I must have done about fifty shites, man. I was, I was fat and dust. You know what I mean? How were you? How were you? How were you? Just before you went on, were you nervous? Oh, I was rattled, mate. I was wandering away, see that in my head. My head's like, ah, you can't do this. You're not capable of doing this. Cause as a wee boy, people always told me I wasn't good enough. For it's just the way it is. Everybody gets that mm-hmm. problem, but. It was just my, my wife was there, mate, and, and see if she wasn't there, mate, I would run that fuck, you know what I mean? But you need she's that, that positive, to, she's to that she's my rock, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And she's like, like, come on, you've worked hard, go, go and get your bread now, you fucking, you've baked her, mm-hmm. you've been in the oven for two do months. Do you look back at it but and go to yourself, do you get yourself a pat on the back? Because sometimes I think we forget how fucking <clears> well we've came, <throat> what we've done and what we're achieving, you kind of forget, because we're living it, it doesn't feel mm-hmm. any different, it doesn't feel... Different, but we know we're, we're doing different. We know yeah, we're, yeah. we're becoming better people. We know it's the hardest thing's getting used to being a full time comedian for me because I've always grafted. Because obviously, I've got five wins and a wife, mm-hmm. so I couldn't just like a lot of comics are single and they're young, they can just do comedy full time because they can live off a thousand pounds a month, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, for me, I always had to keep a job to provide for my family, and then I would have to obviously do my comedy as my hobby. And I was going to gear it up because of that because I wasn't making enough money and I wasn't getting enough time with my family. And that's when I value myself, is I value myself and how much time I can give my wins and, and my wife, how much I can continue to change to benefit them. So the comedy's brilliant, the money's going to be brilliant, but 
when I gave myself a pat at the back, it's because I'm being a better dad, but I'm being a better person. A better you know person I mean? yourself. Mm-hmm. I definitely, and that's the best way to look at and it. And as you know, I've read The Secret, Tony Robbins mm-hmm. books, I've changed my whole life mm-hmm. in that. Self-help. Self. Stuff. If you're getting brought up for a scheme merit, mm-hmm. you're getting conditioned to think the world's no good, it's mm-hmm. life shite, and you can't go for the easy option, ah, a drug no, dealer, ah, you know ah, what I mean, no steal. Re- ah, and there's no really an option, because... Mm-hmm. There's only one end product in that. There's only going to be one end, and that's disaster, mate. And it's never going. It's always going to set you up for failure. But it's difficult if you're conditioned into believe that's a, a way to go and that's life. And like I say, it's about rewiring your brain and educating yourself to understand. Wait a minute, man. I can achieve something. You're a dad as well, so you're on the score. You've got to set standards because your wins. I looked up my dad or my stepdad. You know what I mean? But your wins are a reflection of you. That's it. They follow your footsteps. It doesn't matter what you teach them. They they follow your actions. Mm -hmm. And actions speak louder than words. And we can sit here and and talk it's only fucking words but we're putting it into, we're putting it into action or the backlash that we receive and we still it, it doesn't stop us figuring on because if you start getting enemies then trust me man that's you you're moving forward because people don't like that you're fucking making that's waves what I, that's what I found hard was a lot of the comedians have fucking turned their nose up to me a wee bit because aye, I'm doing so well aye, just, but that's and, jealousy and, and a lot of them have messaged me and said well done Gary proud of you and that's nice you know what I mean but there's people that I've seen as pals who turned out to one of my pals and mm-hmm. it's madness but all I care about Put food the table for my family and give my audience a great show. See if I can do the two things. I couldn't give a fuck what's going on outside the world. But it is sad, but that's in any environment, there's more than people who jealous because what happens is they're focusing on everybody else. Stop focusing on that because guy. Because you're pairing yourself up to something, then, and that's where the mentality else. is, or you're the next Jimmy, Jim, Johnny Vegas, or whatever. When you, when you set yourself a goal and say, I want to be Lee Evans, mm-hmm. you might get to where Lee Evans uh, got to, but how do you take that to the next level? Mm-hmm. I don't size myself up. Time's important. You've not got a lot of time. 150 hours a week. What do you do within that 150 hours a week? But you, all right, be a better dad. You know what I mean? That's. But you're utilising. People have got to ask themselves the question: Are you utilising the hours to become a better person? That's it. To, to, to value your worth. People might say, "Oh, I work hard," but are you working hard to build somebody else's dreams? Are you working for a boss? Or are you doing it for yourself? Mm-hmm. Are you starting? Like, it's no easy to make changes. It's no easy to have a commitment to something and, and rewire that brain to focus on to something that you want to do in your life. It takes fucking guts and it takes a, a big bit of balls, mate, to, oh, to it's an emotional change. Hit. Aye, it's a heavy because emotional we're pals. I'm going to give a D Maxwell, who's a good pal of yours. The three of us are kind of on the same journey. Mm-hmm. We speak to each other quite a lot and it's not all what you see and positive and happy, man. We have our moments where we go, I'm done. No I matter how bad day. Aye, day. And, but it's, if you have a bad day, then just make sure you go and have another two good after that. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? When's, it, when's it, these dates for the, the SECC? 24th of November, two of them, on the same day. How do you know get a third one put in? Just greed, mate, because I want to give my audience a, a good show. And now, now my anxiety is so bad. I think, I thought, I sat down and I thought, right, we can take that me money after the hire, there wasn't a lot to be made, or we can add a second show and we can make better money and have two good shows, you know what I mean? And then David's like, let's add a third show. And I'm like, no, because I want to give my audience a brilliant two shows. Mm. If I've got a third show, even, I'm, I'm confident that it would sell out. We've got the Amadillo for next year, mm-hmm. uh, for November next year, so I've got that big one. It's just greed, and I can just wait to that and then have a belter, a big gig, you know what I mean? But but greed's good enough. It's not quality, it's not quantity, you know so, what I mean? It's so more intimate. Getting the audience a show where they're going to come back, mm-hmm. they're going to go, the big game, the fat game was good, you know what I mean? Let's teaser. go back and see them, aye. How have you been dealing with anxiety and that? <clears> the only thing I'm finding weird is uh, people looking at me. Like walking down the street, Sunday talks to me, it's brilliant. Cause I, you know what I'm like, I'm a fucking chatterbox, you know what I mean? Like, somebody says hello, I'll not be here laughing for 10 minutes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, get him fuck, man, get the selfie and get him to fuck, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's when people walk by and just kind of go, ah, look at me, or they stare through a window, or, or they talk, you know, oh, is that Gary for? It's weird, man, it's, it's people are doing it bad. Just because I'm not used to getting this amount of attention, like, I, I go to the street, when I walked in here today, mm-hmm. see people stop me for a picture, and that's brilliant, because you're like, fucking hell, I'm valued off of people, mm-hmm. no... My hierarchy, you know uh, what I mean? Do people care? Uh, people are seeing but it's you. just hard to get used to people pointing or beeping the horn. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because, like, obviously, if somebody talks to me, I, I'm, I've got a head like a boulder. So I forgot <laughs> everybody from my past, right? So if somebody talks to me, I don't know if they're my pal. Or an enemy. Or, 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 no, or a new person. Mm-hmm. So I just go, I, I'm alright, mate. How's your man? Probably like, the fuck does it over my man? Because I'm trying to work out if I know them from school. Well, my man's just passed away last month. But I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about that. She was a lovely one. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard he's working oh, yeah, like yeah, 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 a guy okay from Nigeria. Yeah. Not he's not my man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, a bit on, it's a wonderful journey. And it's, it's a great opportunity to have the finances where I can be a good dad. Uh, be a good comedian and obviously now 
me and my wife are doing stuff in the community as well, which is nice because they're putting everything back that the community gave us to do, you know what I mean? Because I spoke about that last week. We were at um, Chrissy's house, which is Anne Rowan's suicide, the event, which Anne runs a 24 hour suicide centre in Wishaw. She's phenomenal, isn't she? Oh, amazing, mate. And I can't thank these people enough me, yourself, uh, D Maxwell. And it likes big Chris that. Bungard and all, ah, yeah, big fighter, mate, big <laughs> and the two spooky women next to me, <laughs> the two, two spiritualists who talk to ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what happened? You were away. What happened? I was, I was sitting, right, and obviously I'm talking to Dean, Chris Bungard, and the spiritualist woman there next to me, and, and she's chatting to me like, oh, I said, "Would you name a spiritualist?" And I was like, "Oh, do you need people's hands done?" It. She went, "No, we talked to like the dead," and I was like, oh, "You talked to dead people?" I was like, "Listen, pal." I'm a shite bag, right? I'm, I'm scared of horror films. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to know it. And like, Casey's like, you're going to die in six days. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to know it. And then she, she looked down and she went, Gary, there's somebody behind you, right? And I'm like, here, pal, I've told you, right? None of this spooky shit. I'm like, she went, no, there's somebody behind you. And I turned around as a wee waiter guy like that. Do you want the veg or the beef? <laughs> so I'm fine for it. I thought you were a ghost. <laughs> that was mad, man. I liked how you sat two seats up away from him. <laughs> I know, fuck that, man. It was good to go and behave. But for us, mate, even though com we come across confident that, even got at these events, you still get anxiety, we still get that. But these people at these events, for anybody in the struggle, I know I'm going to just put it out there. Uh, Andy McLaren's running a, every Wednesday uh, out in uh, Chrissy's house on a Wednesday night. So for anybody that's wanting to come off the gear or need somebody to talk to, or whether it's gambling, a drink, whatever, Wednesday night Andy McLaren's doing massive things out there. He's just... Uh, Who was the big positive guy we were talking to? Where? Is it Jav? Is oh, it Jed. Jed, he's Jed amazing, Neil. mate. Aye, Jed's been on the show. Aye, Jed's brilliant, man. And that's another guy who's doing massive things. Every man, with the we, mindset. Who's the wee singer guy you were following up? Oh, Nicholas McDonald. Throwing him out their names, I quoted <laughs> it. That's what I'm saying. Last year, man, it was on my phone, but it was just all fucking dial booze and <laughs> when I can get Charlie Green, Eckies, <laughs> and now, it's all, <laughs> now I've got uh, John Hart saying, Paul Ferris, yourself, uh, Nicholas McDonald. Paul, it's Paul, Paul Ferris is a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was looking through my phone book last week. I was like, all these numbers. Porn stars, are, porn stars, porn stars. All these numbers. I tell you, you've not got back Glasgow live. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm gutted about that. I'm disappointed. So how was uh, how was the, the porn star? Was she a good laugh? She was brilliant, man. George is brilliant. She's brilliant, man. But like I say, people judge, don't they? Mm -hmm. People perceive. It's such a good thing you're doing because you, you get those bands. Obviously, like when you had Pamela Monroe. Mm -hmm. Like me and my wife watched that, two's were fucking breaking her heart. That woman's just an incredible woman, you know what I mean? So you go through bands where it's like sad, then you've got Jed who's positive, then you've got obviously so. the, the crime guys who are fucking Gangsters interesting. Are people change their life. Like, they're, they're all different. It doesn't matter. So it's not you like you've just got a certain theme but it's the same thing every month. Well, it's called anything uh, goes. I don't know if there's a wee bit of jealousy mixed up with us, me, demo, because they can't ask the questions that I'm asking. Mm -hmm. I'm an open book, I don't give a fuck. I ain't lying down or bending off for no cunt. And that's just the way it is. I'm, I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm just trying to create a better life for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm a saint or a fucking monk. I make mistakes every day. There's things I do, and I go, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. Probably birds I'm chatting up that I know. I'm just wanting to probably pump. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? As soon as I walk well, in, I'm not in, fucking <laughs> mad. I don't care. As soon as I walk, I walk into a place, it's like, I'm just, all I think I'm thinking of is, is who can get it tonight? You know what I mean? There's things I probably do and I go, right, maybe I shouldn't think that, I still shout at the wains. There's things I do that I'm not proud of, but do not throw my past into my face right. to know, move on way, to help create homelessness or help promote what we've achieved and help the charities in it. So back to Glasgow Live, like I say, that's the last I'll speak with them, but I was pissed off about it and like I say, I'll move oh, on to it. pissed off, you know, well, you was just know, but when somebody throws... But see, the thing is, is like, obviously I was talking to that homeless guy today, Kenny, mm -hmm. and he was talking about you, which was fucking bizarre, because I was coming here to meet you. And it was weird because obviously even the homeless are getting, people must be saying, oh, because it changed my perception on it. Mm -hmm. I see a homeless guy or a woman now, I'll just say hello. Mm -hmm. I might not get him money every day. Mm -hmm. I've not got a lot of money now, mm -hmm. but I'll be like, all right, how are you getting on? And what, before I'd be kind of scared, like, oh, they're, they're junkies and alkies, I'll keep mm -hmm. away from them because in the scheme, you keep away from the junkies and alkies, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. when I watched your video and I sat with D Maxwell and what was that venue in the Kelton? Uh, so it looks. So looks. I sat break my fucking heart. You know what I mean? Bubbling like a wee lassie. Well, breaking, but mm -hmm. I lived it. I was in the street for seven days. I don't want a pat in the back. I'm already doing things. I said that. I the homelessness that is different. I stayed in the street. People who were in that documentary were breaking their heart to me every night. People who have died have been in it. I seen a wee guy doing a lane deed, 19 alone. That is, it breaks my heart. So when somebody is not going to try and back it or whatever, it's going to upset me. Well, I'm going to, I'm about I'm going to get my back up. So that's the only reason I was pissed off because. He never watched it. He's no lived it, what I went through. 
It doesn't matter what the fuck past you've got. It doesn't matter what you've been involved in. It's nothing to do with that. It's about the homeless situation in Glasgow. We're all human beings. We're all connected. We need a helping hand, man. But the vision and the plans I've got and the people who's coming to my life this year to create the change that's needed. Like I say, I don't need anybody. I never have. I've seen it on Saturday. Like, everybody's kind of buzzing about you. Like, even like, was it Susie Maguire? Yeah, Susie's like, All the people were all like, fucking James, that was amazing. And mm-hmm. heartfelt stuff. And I think yeah. you've, even what you've done, because even on Glasgow Live, everybody shared it. Everybody else has. Mm-hmm. And everybody's taught about it. So imagine how many people you've impacted the now who will see a homeless person aye. and go up and say to them, oh, have a nice day. Aye, or, aye. How are you today? You all right? Eating a get your coffee? Or, mm-hmm. That, that's what your goal was and that's what you've done because it changed me mate Aye. and it changed me and all Aye. because I don't know if he's thinking I'm doing that for the wrong reasons I'm doing it for my reasons but I've always said that everything I do is for me so if I'm creating stuff to create the homeless it's me it feels good it's rewarding for me to change other people's lives I've changed my life for all the fucked up shit that I've done so do not throw fucking stones at me and tell me what I've done in my past when I'm trying to rectify it and move on do you know what I mean if you're lying in the streets mate and if you're homeless man that is a horrible fucking place to be in I've lived it, mate, and people are walking by, yeah, I've seen them greeting. Do you know what I mean? Everybody's got a story. Everybody's got, got a life and everybody's still got hope. It's every perfect. Exactly. Thing. And the people who were in the documentary have changed their lives after 32 years have been on the smack. People can change. Do you know what I mean? That's what I like about, well, I'm not kissing your ass here, right? But that's what I like about Ferris, is that even though he's had such a bad past and maybe he's seen as a bad person and stuff, whatever, you know, but he flipped his life around. He doesn't get involved in that. He writes books, aye, and fucking... But he probably does hurdles behind the scenes that nobody talks about for charities or people that need help, you know what I mean? That's like, what I'm saying, it's not about promoting it. And we do things you'll never get away from that stigma because everybody will not. just go, he's Paul Ferris. Aye. Even though he's changed his life, probably doesn't do anything bad. Mm-hmm. Like maybe I used to do back in the days, but he's mm-hmm. staying good now. But nobody cares about it. People just care about the bad stuff you've done. People want horror stories, stories but Aye. people don't care about your feelings or well-being. Mm-hmm. They're just thinking about themselves to get stories out there mm-hmm. and, and, and create bullshit basically do you know what I mean and I'm, there's a lot of good people in the media I've got pals for the sun the, the times and the record I'm not slating anybody do you know what I mean but if somebody's going to try and out me and, and give me excuses they're only valid in my opinion then I'm going to out you I think you need to worry about it mate I'm not, no, I'm not like done, I say you've done amazing it's not it wasn't even it's, it's pointless anyway it's, it, you're like me but see if somebody like, we spoke about this in the last podcast if I've got a video that's got 50, 60 thousand views Everybody's like, you're fucking amazing, big man, you're the best things, it's fucking Connolly, right? Throw <laughs> <laughs> my name out there, you know what I mean? And then, but there's one guy's like, that guy's a fat, ugly wank, and I'm like, what? You know what I mean? I want to get my scrunchie in and kick, fuck him. I, know, I can't just... take negativity because. Like, but that's her ego. Aye. That's her ego. That's something that I work on every aye. day, but, I, but I'm a comedian, I'm in the public. Somebody's going to shout in the street, you're fucking shite. Mm-hmm. Back in the days, I'd have been like, that's where I go, you clown, but now, now you've just kind of get the head down and go, right, he might be having a bad day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or his oh, bird no. must fancy me or something, I don't know, but I'll just pass him. <laughs> no, I know, I know, it's, it's about accepting it, but and it's about it taking it in the chin, but I wasn't accepting it because it's about homelessness. I've seen people dying in these streets. Oh, I've, seen them. Seen, I, I've seen them, I, I've seen them greeting, and I promised them I would create change, I would create awareness, because people go and do their documentaries, they're there for a few hours, and then they leave, and that's it, done. No. I never, I was there for fucking seven days, I gave up my Christmas. I've I done c- that, I've done that gig in Berlin, and, uh, and I, obviously it was last year, Christmas, and the Ross Kemp video was in, and Ross Kemp's like, yeah, I'm living in Berlin, you know, as if he was staying in the jail. Mm. And then I went and met in the jail. And I said to one of the wee, the wee fucking jail guys, I was like, ah, where did Ross Kemp sleep? <laughs> Mate, my old mate's on hotel. You're joking. He came in here for him to dog bench and then fucked off, you know what I mean? You know, stay there. Didn't stay there, but that's what these people did. They go in the show, big show, but if I, and it was a great documentary, but but if I don't, but if I don't, look at me, then change. Mm. But you went on the street, didn't tell any cunt. And you were there for seven days, you know what I mean? Exactly. And uh, it's not about me. It wasn't about the pat in the back. It wasn't about that. It was to create awareness. Mm-hmm. The documentary is to create awareness, to get people to watch it, so we can create change and show people this is what's happening in our streets. Do you know what I mean? To actually live it. We need money, need phone, need nothing. I've done it. I've done it. And I don't want the pat in the back. I don't want people to promote it. And I get uh, the media thing. They've got stories that they need to do and they work for bosses. I get it. But don't hit me with poor excuses that... Piss me off. Just say no. Aye. No. Just, just say, I don't like you, James, and we've got other things we need to do. He just gave me a big list of excuses, mm-hmm. and I just got my back up. I was like, you wee fucking weasel, man. Don't tell me you don't know me. And the fact that he didn't watch it, I know it pissed us off because he's not seen what's actually going on. It's not seen the effect it's having on people. It's not seen the changes. We've had thousands of messages that people now want to come forward to create change. This is just a guy with a vision that's want to create awareness to, to make the world a better place. Because if you're doing good in life, it makes you feel good. 
and that's what it's doing, do you know what I mean? So, like I say, I got my back up, but it's an elephant where if they'd done a story anyway. It wasn't caring about it. You're doing enough groundwork anyway. Aye, you know I've mean? got a big enough social media following for people to back it and, and keep going. And It's only been out three weeks, but the changes has already been, it's unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? And that's only... I did not see a woman for a restaurant or had said that... Restaurants have opened up now, they're giving out free food for homelessness. We've got uh, letting agencies now giving out rooms. Mm -hmm. um, the, the effect has been unbelievable. Like I say, we don't... We do a lot of groundwork. We go out bags every other day, whether it's food, clothes. We don't promote it. We don't post it and say, look what we're doing. We don't, we're doing all the work in the background. But when it comes to the documentary, to get it out there to create awareness, I need to make people to speak about it, mm -hmm. to create the change, because as soon as people watch it, it doesn't just make you look at homeless people differently. It makes you question your own life differently. And I say that all the time because we all live in luxury, man. We all love to moan and complain about the shittiest and stupidest things. But really, man, is our life really that bad? Because everything we battle is up and up. Well, that's it. Yeah, I mean? It's amazing, isn't it? What you think about it like that? Mm -hmm. You're too busy looking at your life to look in inside what's going on. Like, mm -hmm. I was like that. I didn't see, as you know, I didn't see my, my two daughters. I seen my them now and again. And I didn't see one at all. And I remember that two years ago. But I was changing myself, changing my attitude, being a better husband. Never bad to Ashley, I never done it bad, but I would do things like flop my lashes on social media, things that were wrong that I shouldn't have done. And see when I decided, right, she's an amazing wife, I've got Wayne's there that haven't seen me, I need to fucking up the ante, I need to change myself. And see, see now that I'm speaking to my two daughters nearly every day, mm -hmm. I'm involved in their lives, got to their dance classes, you know what I mean, going for fucking cheeseburgers or whatever we do with them, and then being a better husband to new Wayne's that... I would rather be that guy than be a money hungry fucking famous comedian. Mm -hmm. See if I can do what I love in comedy and be a good husband and dammit, that's all I want. Mm -hmm. I don't need to make ten million pound or, or be bridges. Mm -hmm. I value my life, I don't value my success. Mm -hmm. but everything is with my wife and Wayne's Aye. happy. See, see, see if I get the big stuff, I'll take it all day long. Mm -hmm. But as long as I can remain humble and remain a good guy mm -hmm. for for every, for a plain level, but we're all good. We've just got a house in, in Balgary Hill, at Lindsay Terrace in Springburn. And my wife set up a wee community group. So I've started helping out with the kids club. High balls low. They bring a, a youth leader in to do some games with the reins. And I help out there now. Just kind of supervise and playing football with the reins. And it's amazing to see that I, look, I see the reins and I see myself. And that's been the biggest thing for me because some of the reins haven't got a lot. And now where I am, I'm doing all right now. It's like I'm so humble because I remember being that way before all. My new dreams. All I wanted to do was get a job in work. Now I'm flying, and it's like, it's fucking, I might have installed with these wings. Mm -hmm. You just can do anything you want. Don't, don't feel like because you're in Bulgary Hill that, you, that you, your dreams won't work, you know what I mean? It's like, pray to God, there's not going to answer every prayer. Mm -hmm. But as, as long as you move forward in life, you'll, you'll get what you want. But life is the gift. Mm -hmm. That's the gift that if you've got... But you know that for the scheme, people Aye. say to you, right, or you look at your pals who the mas and dads take to Florida every year, and you're sitting in fucking Seat and Sands or Craig Tara, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For a day's holiday. And then you also feel like you disvalue yourself, but now I get to be in the community, get involved in my community and tell these ways that... See, this not what I like about the scheme, is the drug dealers are the heroes. Mm. As you know, right. the drug dealers, the gangsters, they're the heroes, big brain drovers. And all the ways go, oh, I want a big successful... And that's what Wayne sees success. Right. Wayne's look at a dealer and goes, he's got a big fancy motor, he's got an amazing wife, a girlfriend, and... Mm. I would love to be the guy the wins look at and go, oh, oh Gary, done it. Gary had a normal job. Mm -hmm. Gary worked hard and he got what he is. That's the kind of example I want to say. But the real value is the way you value your life. That's like it, I say, aye. the drug dealers, everybody who I grew up with, are dead. Are paranoid. Are dead or in, in the jail. jail. Aye. Saw these big fancy motors, neither they had the good looking birds. All these birds are fucked. Mm -hmm. Mentally, they're fucked because you've got to understand is if you're doing bad in this world, your gift in life is how much goodness you put in the world. So if you're selling drugs, man, you've got to remember, you're destroying other people's lives. You're destroying other people's lives to benefit you. To walk about with your fake Rolex and walk it, and drive about in a leased motor that's not even fucking yours anyway. <laughs> Kidding on, you're a big baller. <laughs> sitting at a party. All these wee birds sitting, oh, the parties, I was only sesh for two days. Hen, you've had the same fucking knickers on for two days. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Get a grip of your life. That, that 18 months ago, that's what I'm saying. I was laughing, man, because what I've... 18 months ago, mate, I was in a crack down up post, so. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to mention names. Firstly, I'm not a grass. Secondly, I wouldn't embarrass the boy, Mackie. <laughs> I was sitting in the house, mate. And I was sitting there. I think it was last, last April, mate. I was out for two days or three days. And I'm sitting looking around. I've got a guy in a corner with a kettle hanging for his ass with a strip, mate, to show it. I, mate, it was freaky, man. I had two birds greeting. I had another guy in the kitchen, mate, with his tap half cutting. I don't know what the fuck he was cutting, mate. And I'm sitting there myself and thinking, I'm sitting my high vis vest on. And I'm sitting with the. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Do you know what I mean? What am I doing with my life, man? I'm 33 or 32. I was thinking, what am I doing? 
And I, I went, hey, man. And I got all my shit done together, mate. And like I say, fast forward 18 months versus the results again. Mm -hmm. But it's scary to fall back into that trap to think, sitting at a party end, for two, three days on full of Charlie is a life. And we've we got the same tunes on we've been listening to since we were 15. <laughs> Nothing changes. <laughs> same the same party, same party, mate. Sitting in a kitchen. Mm -hmm. Same nicknames. Ask yourself, is that what it's about? And we, we, we jump about the tunes with the big swaggers. Every cunt sitting, 15 year old sitting on a fucking table and dancing with a big bottle of body, thinking they're big ballers. When they've just spent all their fucking wages on a pair of new pants and soaks, <laughs> so they can go to the dancing and think, that's it, I'm a gangster. That 15 we've chucked in for a bottle of body. Aye, a gangster, aye, a gangster's not a hanger. They're all getting pictures, mate. It's fucking <laughs> bullshit. And for all these guys to think, oh, he's a gangster, I look up to him, but he's scary. That's a mask he's got on, that's vulnerability, because they're so fragile. If I become loud, if I shoot you, stab you, it keeps people away from me. For me, it was, I was the funny guy. I made everybody laugh. So for me, if I made everybody laugh and everybody liked me, they would stay away from me. They'd go, oh, there's English. But then as soon as I see them, I had to do daft shit. Make a fool of myself. I was a big fucking jester, mate. I should have just put a clown suit on and just, <laughs> uh, just run about the tune charging people. But for that, that was my mask. It was the funny guy, because I could go to every area and, and sit at any fucking party because I was funny. Guy with the clays half tunes on, bamming everybody up. But that was a mask for me because I was pleasing fly, fly, everybody fly, else. Yeah. And then you've got the mad cunts who would... Don't talk to me. I'll do you. But, but, I don't know if I've spoken about it, but some man of my pal says, I was scared of nothing. I was, I was scared of everything, but fear to fuck all. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it's just, I'm scared of you, but what I'm going to do is pretend that I'm a nutcase. You come near me, you want to fight me, I'm going to do you. It's just that, uh, that's another mask. So we're looking up to these rang heroes and these rang people, and really, it's the working class people, the people who are grinding, the people who want to better their life. To better their mindset is the people who we should be looking up to. We've got rang role models. We've got role models who, like I say, used to watch and you, you look at You look at a drug dealer and, and then but your ma's doing two jobs to try and give you everything you need. Mm -hmm. And your ma's not a hero, your ma's just a normal woman, but right. she's fucking, you've need that. Mm -hmm. Your ma's grafting two jobs to feed you every day. And it's just rang mentalities. But I would like to, that's the whole idea with the community stuff. Actually can impact the mums in the community. And obviously we can get them in the veins and just say that this is, let's do something positive with it, let's do some art, let's talk to them and, and give them the attention that they need. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's good, it's exciting, exciting future. And that's, that's my goal now, is to be a better person, a better comedian and impact my community. And if big things come for that, mm -hmm. that'll be great. But that's what I'm saying, we're doing it, mm -hmm. we're creating it. What's it? So the, better, the next goal is to be a better version of yourself, keep improving on you, working on your dreams, Keep taking things to the next level. Your Facebook following is unbelievable. That's bad. It's unbelievable, mate. You're hitting millions of views every month. Mate. That is frightening. That's what I'm saying. The, the power of social media. It's mm -hmm. bigger than. Every, it's, it's and the, that's it's why the live videos are good because mm -hmm. people and like, these are good because people get to see your true self. Mm -hmm. They don't get a fake guy. When I go on a stage, you've got me for 20 minutes at a, a comedy gig. That's an act. When you get me for an hour, you get to know me a bit better, but. The thing with the live videos is people are getting to see you and oh, I'm walking down to the gym or I'm, I'm walking about having a laugh. Mm -hmm. That's me as a person, which, which is nice. And I think that's what people bought so much as you'll probably get with live videos is like, they love that they can talk to you. They can say, all right, big man, you're like, all right, Stevie Boy House things. And I get a wee shout out. You're shy. Oh, you're fucking shy or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it gives people hope, mate. And mm -hmm. that's the main thing, to give people hope right. that your life's not over. Fucking day and day, Same as myself. First years in comedy, mate, I was fucking shy. Mm -hmm. Honestly, mate, it was horrendous. I watched a video of my first gig, mate, <laughs> and I was like, see if I could go back in time, I'd kick fucking myself. Can I have a stage of that? <laughs> but just because I was so determined and wanted a better life, I just kept digging in, digging in, and I got good eventually. But you never gave up? Never gave up, mate. But that's what I'm saying, we give people hope. We're in my ways, you know, Gary? 31. So we're in my 30s, mate. Do you know what I mean? And usually people say 18, 19s, and nearly 20s, but it doesn't matter, 30s, 40s, 50s, man. If you've got a vision, if you've always had a dream, Go and fucking do it. it Take the steps, mate. Got up in the morning, got up a bit earlier. People say, I've not got time, I've got wains, I've got two jobs. No, what I hated about when I, when I worked, see, like if I worked in a call store, I had the taxi, I worked in a call centre. See, I was walking to work, I like, came out of the train, got on the train, it's packed full of cunts, came out of the train, got, I felt like an ant. See, like an ant colony, like you're all going the same way, go and do your job, then you all come back the same way. And I thought, do you know what? I need to fucking get better at comedy. So I just cut about and fucking. Stare at buildings all day, that's all day, man. <laughs> stare at buildings and talk to junkies, that's all day, man. <laughs> when did you, when, when was it, when did you want to start comedy? When, uh, when was it you say, right, this is what I wanted to Because I had do. anxiety, I had bad anxiety and I looked up things, I had social anxiety because of stuff in the army, so that, when I looked at, when I looked at things to tackle anxiety, it was like, get out of your comfort zone, so my, my discomfort was uh, crowds and people. So I started, I came to the, I'll tell you what happened actually, I came to the Merchant City Festival, my ma, when I first got anxiety, it was really, really bad. It was the first time I came out of the house. And I was it, and I ran for here, right? For here. 
to the royal, for having a panic attack. Find us having a heart attack. I was like to the doctor, mate, I'm having a heart attack. What are you in for? <laughs> the in city is like, be man, that's no heart attacks, fucking anxiety. So things like that. I was terrified. So I wouldn't leave the house a lot. And if I did, I'd run home. I'd fucking, I'd be automatic to say, I do what I go. So I looked up things to challenge it. Be next army, you've just got to attack everything. And it was a uh, public speaking. It was a terrifying thing. So I built myself up. A pal came with us. Went and done a gong show. I comedy so many days you got. You've got two minutes. If you're good, uh, you get through it. Five minutes, you can win 50 quid. If you're shite, they put the card up in two minutes. I was that shite, mate. I lasted 15 seconds in the gong days. <laughs> I know what I mean, but I got one laugh and I remember the feeling. It was like, oh, I feel... And it was the first time I properly felt a wee buzz of happiness, you know what I mean? And after that, so, I would go into a five minute set and get one laugh, but see that one laugh, that charged me for the next gig and have the courage. And that was it, mate. I just came out my shell. And then after two years, I started getting full laughs, full gigs, fucking. Do you think that's numbers. where the feel good factor is where you make people laugh? Make, make people happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Obviously, I get something for it. I get a buzz when somebody laughs. It's like, see Monsters Inc. when they give the cunt a fright and they charge the big yellow thing. Mm -hmm. I'm the big yellow thing. So I'm getting cunts frights, they're all laughing. I'm, I'm getting charged up and then. And that's what drives me, the thought I have, in, and then the commander gig. Make 500 people laugh, mate, it was fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. See that you could feel the laughter just bouncing right off us. The energy. Oh, mate, it was mate, crazy. And happy. I didn't want to come off. Mm -hmm. I was expecting a big fucking hook to come out and pull me off his stage. <laughs> <laughs> and then broke my legs off with it. Fucking arm, and he outside of the wing. <laughs> have you got true. your material before you go on, or do you, do you throw in bits in? Both, bit, bits of both. I've got written material which I'll use, but I'll talk to the audience, have a laugh. I never slag anybody. I don't like putting them down, but see if somebody heckles us, I'll fucking ruin their life, you know what I mean? But if somebody, <laughs> <laughs> if somebody's just brand new and they're like, oh, we love you, but I love you too, mate, and high fiving cunts, and I've talked to the audience, have a bit of laughing, but I never slag them, but it's good because you always get them on me asshole for a year. Of course. I'll like shout. I'll <laughs> <laughs> shout, did you? Aye? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, mate, they just fucking, the inner Ned kicks in, slash your hats on Mera <laughs> Peak, you know what I mean? I'm like, we're in your life, you know Scrunchy in, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know, but what you're doing, mate, is, is frightening, man. The live show, it, it's good because people see me live on Facebook and people like it. Some people go, it's shite. But see it at a live show when I've got an audience, it's a completely different environment. Ten times better than on my live videos and everybody says that, which is nice. So it's good because people come expecting the, the Gary Falls live video, mm -hmm. but they get proper material, they get proper banter, proper ah, laugh from the audience. It's, it's great. Thing. But the fear really? can kick in. Is that, is that what spurs you on, I think? Because that's what spurs me on, the fear of... Me getting back to that old James. Pure adrenaline, mate. Full of green. Oh, right, full yeah. of Valium. Full <clears> of fucking... Well, do you know what? See, the new, I've done about what I wanted to do. See if it all stopped tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And my family were happy, mate. I wouldn't give a fuck. I would just go and get a normal job and be a normal guy in my family. But, but what I wanted in life was to have my veins back. Mm -hmm. Was to have a good marriage and I've got that. So everything else that comes as a bonus? Everything comes as a bonus. If comedy stops tomorrow, mate, I had a great fucking run. Mm -hmm. What's next, do you know what I mean? Let's go and take care of a fucking IT company. <laughs> I'll just be good at something else, you know what I mean? Selling tea. That's it, but obviously the comedy thing is going to be going. Going to Australia and Canada next year. Bangkok, you know what I mean? No, the world's yours, man. Elgy. The world's yours, man. Are we gigging pools or not? Is there any wee scheme gigs? I start, I'm doing a, I'm doing a, a gig in Kirky. Yeah, just like doing Saturday. it for me, innit? That's like it's a fucking peasant. Where's my caviar? I'm not going to But as I'm saying, I'll still keep gigs like that. I'll still dairy be pubs. Because that's what I love. I love having that one-to-one -one with my audience. Mm -hmm. But that's you know going to get you. It's going to trial and error your material. Oh, it drives well. my agent off his fucking head. He's like, oh, do you want to do this for us? I'm like, I know, I did it. I don't see it on the fucking mm -hmm. <laughs> Middle Eastern house. <laughs> but like I say, the numbers that you've had this year mm -hmm. has been frightening. Mm -hmm. And there's nobody else doing what you're doing now. Well, I'm on a wave, mate. I'm going to continue trying. to ride it. Because I know, like I say, I was talking about Dee and She's been getting a lot of stick for mm -hmm. the comedy circuit still. The hard material, which she does, mm -hmm. which is sad and it's sickening to see. People slagging The best thing I've done, which Dave should do, is I took myself out the comedy circuit. I don't do comedy circuit gigs anymore. Because mm -hmm. why would you go and do something you love with people that didn't love you? I know. It's like going to play football before cunts at fucking five or sides, before guys that actually hate you. They're not going to pass you the ball. How's the They're circuit They're not going to give you the ball. But as a circuit gig is obviously five different comedians. You don't get, you don't say, oh, me and James will go in that gig. You all get picked individually after the promoter. And you're all good. It's the Scottish comedy circuit's in fire the new way, right? But there's obviously people who don't like you for maybe they think you're an arsehole or they're jealous of what you're doing. It's like any environment or any workplace. If you're doing well in your work, there's a, a guy that wanted the same promotion as you, you know what I mean? And, and I didn't like that environment because of anxiety. I don't like, I'm not, I can't be fake. I can't sit in a room with somebody who doesn't like me because I'll just go, ah, why do you not like me if I done to you? And that causes a fucking riot, as you know. So instead of having to feel that every time I do a gig, I just thought, do you know what? 
I'm not doing any gigs anymore. I'm going to do my own thing. And that's when I just thought, you know what? I hope my audience back me. And they've fucking mailed them back to me. I'm sold out most of my gigs 2019 now. I can't believe it. But that's because people, I gave it to the people and say, right, I don't want to do this kind of environment, but I can give you just me. Do you want a bit? And everybody grabbed a bit of the cake. That's what I'm so And I'm just it. going to keep putting the All cake right. out. For anybody that's wanting to do something, man, social media is a massive platform. It's your own station. It's a great platform. To, to create whatever you want. And there's other comedians right. that will follow in pursuit of what I've done. They're doing live videos and I'm not jealous. I just go and good on them. Because right, you've obviously got We've all got yeah. ideas for something else right. to go, right, this is what we want to do. But it's not about. If you, you go I'm not competitive. Because that's, that's something that I used to have. Mm -hmm. Jealousy, bitterness, competitive. Mm -hmm. I was like that before, but see now, I just want to be a good husband and a good dad. Mm -hmm. The comedy's great and it's good money, but it if somebody good, does uh, better than me, I'll just go at her. See the way up the ladder. Well done, mate. Fucking all the best. Keep climbing. Scant them. That's it. Trousers <laughs> down. She's Bobby. Aye, but that's what I'm saying. There's success Aye. out there. There's enough for everybody. My success is in my family life. Aye. My success is in my bank balance. Mm -hmm. And oh, if yeah, I get both, well, let's fucking go for it. That's what, what I'm mean? saying. Everything else becomes a bonus, but what you're achieving, mate, and I'm not, like I say, we're good pals, man. I'm proud of you. For being my right back at you, mate. My guest, it's it been well. the second time that anybody's ever been on the show, so. That's and the last chat was heavy depressing, man. At least that's not It was a bit depressing because we we're just starting off. It was, <laughs> it was scary, mate. Mm. On that journey, it's scary to go, all right, I'm starting off to go, what are you doing a podcast for? It's not going to work. Or, ah, yeah, you need to tone that down a wee bit. But this is me, man. This is fucking me. So and it's got anything goes, uh, Ah, it's anything goes. And the amount of people that message through suicide, whether they're homeless or charities want to get involved and. It's unbelievable. I had a lot of people after your, what I made done because I was talking about my anxiety so much. Yeah. And a lot of people messaged me and said, oh, God, it was great hearing you talk about anxiety like, for about you days ago. But I don't think you'll ever beat anxiety. You need to learn to live with it and battle it. Yeah, so I think that, people man. get a concept, a, a, a theory where they go, right, I'm going to do this and he's believing it and then my anxiety just going to go away. Mm -hmm. And that's how people get fucking ill. Mm -hmm. You've got to realise how to live. And I think that's what that video did. It let people realise you, you're going to live with anxiety. When you get anxiety, this is how you stop an anxiety attack. That's how you control a panic attack. Mm -hmm. Just move forward with your life. Mm -hmm. It needs to get brought And that's after the back of your show. And it needs to get brought into schools and all that, but how to deal with all this stuff and and how to help the mindset. And I always keep saying that everything's a brain, everything's a mindset. Did you, you get a tag about the Russian new faction? What you're feeding, what's that? They're doing a thing with the young boys with a. So I'm going to speak about, like, obviously my mental health and... Or the youth. Changed my dream of comedy. Oh, for, for Royce. Ah, you're tagged in. Ah, no, I go to I. You go to that, I. Big Sean texted me, I. So I done, I done a wee talk with him at the start of the year. I showed him a documentary and that and had a talk with him. Ah, definitely. Mm -hmm. We've got we've got to go around schools. Me, you, Chris McQueer. Aye, ah, we're going to go around jails. Uh, we're going to get big Chris on the show as well. Yeah. Ah, no, mate, life's good, man, and I've got to keep going because it's easy to, to slip back into bad habits, and I don't want it because I've still You've got, got, got that devil there, mm -hmm. man, where if I go to events or if I get, I'm getting offered all these nights out. So there's so much free stuff get offered now, and it's and it's always temptation there, man, because the anxiety sitting with people drunk after the events, I'm fucked on a Sunday. I feel as if I'm hungover, I feel as if I've been on one. You don't drink, I'm just no, drained, you. mate, just constantly getting your energy at everybody else because you're at a level, but then after tours, man, that, like, you're trying to keep everybody's loudness and what and dance and whatever, man. It's great. It is good, but like I say, it drains me, and I've got to come away from it and off for a couple of days to refocus, re regain, and just get back my vision. You know what I mean? So it's brilliant, mate. The tours are doing well. And listen, again, thanks for coming on, mate. I think the world, and this is only the start. We finish this year strong, and I can't wait to see what 2019's got for us, mate. Aye, right. Gaza, love you, brother. Thanks, thank mate. you, and uh, thank you for liquor. New gaff in the Merchant City launch night. Forgot the date. What is it? 13th of October, thank you, Gordon. <laughs> 13th of October, mate. Know what I mean? <laughs> so, launch night, check it out. Merchant City, new gaff at Sotom. Great place, great start. Oh, we've seen that staff. Oh. When, you, when, you buy, when you buy a vodka in here, you get a free bottle of champagne with every vodka. And a suki. Apple games. So, guys, again, thank my brother, you. thank you. Cheers. See you next Boom. Cheers.